Hey, Greg James here from Greg James Fishing World and I'm at this beautiful beach in South Australia at the edge of one of our new marine parks. It's absolutely a sensational day. I'm here hiding in my secret spot away from the maddening crowd as the old story goes and I'm about to show you a unique trick in how to clean octopus and here I am cleaning my oki and I've got a piece of octopus tentacle, a fairly large one and it's covered in ugh, gritty sand but this is a way to clean octopus when you catch it and clean the skin off and later on I'm going to show you how to pickle it with some spicy pickles and uh, a few other things as well so it's a catch it, cook it, eat it demo and what you do is you grab some really, the sand's a little wet but it'll do for the purpose some really dry sand and the idea is to use the abrasiveness of the sand to take the skin off the oki so here we go, we're taking the tentacles and the suckers and all that off the oki, just peeling it back as I work plenty of sand and you're probably going Ugh, Gregory how am I ever going to eat that <coughs> well I'll show you soon so a little bit of patience make a start peel off that thick textured skin using the sand as the abrasive substance to uh, clean it all down and so we're just stripping the octopus down the long tentacle as you can see there little bits of uh, skin coming off to make this a really delectable delightful treat be careful you don't tear as the as the tentacle gets to the narrow end add a little bit more sand just take your time pulling that skin off it gets a bit narrow nice little piece came off there and it might break so you've got to be a little bit careful with how you do it so there you go see I'm just peeling that off bit by bit it's an old technique I learnt many years ago um, used to catch a lot of crayfish rock lobster in my day this is a way that I actually clean the octopus that I used to catch in the cray pots because they'd come in there looking for a thief, a free feed. And believe me, as rock lobster fishermen know, an oki in your pot's not a good thing because the crays never win. You can see that underneath there, beautiful. And we've done in that short moment, we've got this rather sandy looking delight of octopus tentacle. And all the gunk, all the skin, and all the little suckers are now just a mess in the sand. We'll clean them up later, I won't leave them lying around. And what we've got here is a clean, look how white that flesh is underneath, octopus tentacle. I'll go and wash these up now and you'll show just how white and beautiful they are. Then we'll, we'll prepare them and, and jar them in some um, pickled vinegar and a few other tricks I've got up my sleeve. I'll be back in a moment. Watch the just coming down here onto the beach, low tide, a few people out in their kayaks, you've got an intertidal reef uh, right along this part of the coast, it's spectacular, I love it. Uh, my parents used to call me the Corny Point lifesaver when I was a little tacker. I'm not a little tacker anymore as you can all see, but I still love the ocean and all, all the things that are in it. And uh, it's still okay to go fishing. There we have it. It's not bush tucker, but it is. It's sort of marine bush tucker. I'm now going to show you very simply how to prepare this for a pickling episode. I've got a couple of spices and a couple of uh, um, things to add, ingredients to add to it. So get yourself a sharp knife. This is actually a Japanese chef's knife, very thin heel. That's the difference between that and the European model. But it's ultra sharp and it's particularly good for seafood. So we grab one of the octopus tentacles and you don't have to cook it, this is raw and you cut it, look at that, beautifully cut that piece off just to trim it up and that's the tentacle there and we're going to slice this up in a moment and put it in. The big trick is to cut it thinly, it's uh, less is more if you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is cut this, just a few pieces to show you how to do it. Watch the fingers, make sure there's five there when you start and five when you end and then very carefully with a really sharp knife start cutting pieces of your octopus. Look at that. Nice and tight. Nice and sharp I should say. And there you can see little pieces like that, all useful. Not too thick. And it doesn't have any of the suckers or the duck skin on it which does make it quite tough. Like I said, it's not everybody's um, cup of tea so to speak, but it's a delicious way to prepare this octopus for a seafood snack at Christmas or New Year. People can't have enough of it. You can skewer it, put it on toothpicks, just more and more and more people are just grabbing it and eating it as a uh, 
as a part-time snack as the summer season approaches. I've got myself a jar of vinegar. That's about two-thirds vinegar. I'm going to put one-third salt water. So now it's just a matter of adding the sliced, thinly sliced octopus to your jar of salt water and vinegar. Don't use fresh water, use salt water. Salted water is okay, but if you can get water from the sea, it's a lot better. So you basically just pack this stuff in and um, it'll sit in the uh, vinegar. You can really pack it in there, not, not solidly so, but you could put a whole one of those tentacles would be great for that jar. And then um, I've just got a little bit of bottled seawater here. You just top it up, get rid of any oxygen that's in the jar. And eventually that octopus will sink as it soaks in the, um, the juices and a little bit of vinegar. The reason I dilute it is that some people, it upsets their breathing to have the vinegar too strong and it can mask the subtle flavours of the octopus. The big thing in this is how do I get the octopus to be really tender? Well here's the tip, to really soften your octopus, get yourself a pickled gherkin and slice just a couple of pieces, maybe I'll do three or four of really thin gherkin slices, fresh gherkin, straight into the mix. And over a period, this will store for six months, but over a period of about three or four days, the enzymes in the gherkin will actually interact with the octopus and soften it beautifully. Little pieces in there like this. If you did this trick with fish flesh, the fish flesh will eventually break down and dissolve. You need the strong octopus flesh to uh, make this worthwhile. And then as my parting piece, out of my own garden, I've dried these over the last six months or so, I've brought along two little rocket chilies. These are just ones I've grown in the garden, I call them rockets. So they're, they're subtropical chilies, but they grow in a, sub in a uh, subterranean climate. A couple of little chilies, you could break them up if you want. The heat's in the seeds, as we all know. I just drop them in. They will also soak up the water over the next few weeks. I'd leave this for at least a week in the fridge. Got to, got to refrigerate it. Must keep it cool and away from the heat and the direct sunlight. Put your cap on, nice and tight. You don't need a vacuum sealer, you don't have to do anything else, but basically what you've got is pickled octopus, two thirds, one third water, a couple of pieces of chilli just to give it a spicy flavour, and then two or three pieces of sliced gherkin to break down the enzymes in the octopus meat. It's a ripper meal, hope you enjoy it. Tight lines!